in this video we will see more controls first of all we will see the drop down just go ahead and add a drop down once you add the drop down you can see the items property have a data source called drop down sample this is by default that microsoft gives um, it has values 1 2 and 3 just for testing purposes um, if you fire away you can see uh, one two three and you're getting the drop down okay so let's use this and see how you can access the data in the drop down once you select a value so then uh, we add a label so that it knows what we have selected let's make it like big and we can fill it with a color so we know where the labels are there then no items are being selected so i'm going to put light blue to fill okay then go to the text variable properties and i'm going to assign whatever i am selecting in this drop down okay so this drop down is named drop down fun so all you have to do is go to the text one and choose drop down five dot selected dot fun okay if you fire away you can see whatever i choose will be displayed here nice isn't it okay so now we don't want uh, to show a static variables we need to connect from a dynamic source like sharepoint list or excel spreadsheet or ms access or something um, so to do that uh, we have to first create the data source in our sharepoint client to do that i have a sharepoint site already open in my tenant so i'm going to go ahead and create um, a list i'm going to call it entries and then i'm going to quickly edit this put some utensils and admin group okay so under this site my admin group i have a list for countries with all this uh, countries so this items i want to bind it to my uh, drop down items so let's go back here click on the data and connectors and there is a connector already available for sharepoint so let's click that and uh, click on this again um, so this is the already recently created site so if you were to do it for the first time you need to put the url of this i'm going to copy the url of the site back here connect And select the list and then click on fun so this country's SharePoint list is connected to your app now so if you were to bind this list into your drop down if you click here and you know, go to the items and choose the country's list do that and the value of that would be the title of that So if you fire away now, so all the countries that we created in the SharePoint list should appear. There you go, guys. So now if you see that it's an error that's already appearing, it is due to the fact that we just put it as value. So we have to slightly modify it saying that drop down five dot selected dot title. Title is nothing but the column name in this list or title. If you were to add another column called region or something that will also appear here so if you want to choose bind two or three columns to this drop down and if you want to pick uk for example and if you want to show just the region of the uk which is already pulling it from the list it will show as that area i will show you that in a minute so go back to this list create a column let's call it Quick edit, then 
call the region as if uh, you drop out of your path you would need to make a call to yourself if you if this is true and then you do change the path of your call just like that um, exit in this region yeah call done go back here so go back to the data source view data source you might want to refresh it because you had an additional column to the data source you refresh it great come back here uh, we want it to, to be the same way we want to show the title in the drop down but the value that shows in the label should not be title, it should be the region name. So if you found region, here you go. So if you fire it in now, so you can see the region is appearing, but not the, the actual drop down value. Okay. So you can get to choose which columns to dis uh, display in the, uh, in the label or wherever you want to show. Uh, you don't need to be the actual value of the drop down. You have a choice in that. So next control we will see. Um, let's see checkbox. You add the checkbox. So here, similarly, um, here we have not the drop down. So the checkbox name is checkbox two. So go back here change checkbox to dot checkbox sorry value yeah so fire it in so if you tick it will become true and if it's not tick it will become false so basically it returns a boolean value okay next we will see a radio button which is also very similar so that is radio p so go ahead and change the radio P to a selected drop down. Okay, so instead of five, you see two, the radio will display the value of that. That's fine. We'll see the next control. Um, we'll see slider first. Okay, slider. Find a new value, which is one. Let's put maximum value of 30. So if we were to change the slider, let's make the font size of this label to change dynamically. So the font size of that of the label should be slider maximum value. No, we can't see because it's zero. So fire away and we start increasing and we can see the font size. 30 is the maximum for the font size for a label. That's why I put it there. And as you can see, it's increasing as well. So yeah, that's it for this video. We'll see more controls in the next video. Thanks for watching.